It's that time of year again. I'm gonna be sharing with you our 11th grade curriculum choices. Can you believe it? 11th grade. Now, I'm actually gonna turn the camera around and show you the actual books. I'm not gonna do a total flip through or anything. Um, if you want, if you're interested in any specific videos on any of these specific curriculums, let me know and I might be able to do that at some time in the future. Um, but there's a few things that I don't have to actually show you, so I'll probably have to put in some pictures when I talk about those. But I just want to give some context. If you are new to this channel, hi, I am Rachel from 7 and All, and the 11th grader I'm talking about is actually my younger sister. The Seven and All family is a multi-generational um, homeschool family living overseas. I live very close to my parents. I have two young sons of my own and I am involved on a regular basis with the homeschool of my two youngest sisters, much younger sisters, um, because my mom works full time and also we, we just like to do things together as a family. So when we can, we do. So first of all, I will start by talking about math. Uh, we are year-round homeschoolers who homeschool whenever it makes sense to homeschool and when we have a chance to travel is typically the time when we will take a break, a longer break from school. So uh, we have been doing school pretty consistently during, you know, since 2020. <laughs> uh, for Matt, I mentioned in an earlier update she is currently doing trigonometry after already finishing geometry which was kind of her 10th grade math she finished that early and started straight into trigonometry she's using life of fred trigonometry when she finishes trigonometry the plan is to go straight to life of fred calculus we don't actually have that book my mom checked her collection and apparently no one else in the older kids ever got to using life of fred calculus and she hasn't bought it before so she needs to actually buy that um, by the time she finishes trigonometry. So that is our plan for math for 11th grade. And then for language arts for 11th grade, she is going to be doing the good and the beautiful language arts two, like high school level two. She did high school level one this year. She has already finished that. And basically she'll start number two as soon as I can print it for her. The reasoning for this is she really enjoyed the, the Good and the Beautiful Language Arts Level 1. You will find as you watch the rest of this video, this is not the only English related thing that we do. And when I did my review, I did bring to light some maybe weaknesses of the program, but there's a lot that's just enjoyable for her. She's a more math and science oriented person and it kind of challenges her to get outside of her comfort zone with its art and poetry. Um, so she, she really did enjoy that. And so we're bringing it in again. And now let's look at the rest of the major choices. She is going to be doing the vocabulary. She's going to be doing the grammar and composition. And let me see, is there spelling? No, just voc. Looks like it's just vocabulary and grammar and composition from Abeka. And this is the 12th grade level. There is a handbook of grammar and composition and then the workbook. I'll show you has just exercises in it. Our main reason for her doing this is because I really treat this more as SAT and ACT prep because so many of these just little nitty gritty um, pieces that Rebecca covers are exactly what is going to be covered on the English portions of standardized tests for entrance to college. Uh, so I think just continually, I mean this is so small, having these small opportunities to continually work on these little picky little things about perfect English is great. So she's going to be doing this vocabulary right here. You can see vocabulary. I mean, we, we love vocabulary. More vocabulary is good. <laughs> and that has different tests and quizzes, books to go with it. Then for her science, she's not yet finished with chemistry. And instead of going from chemistry to physics, we're going from chemistry to advanced chemistry based on the reasoning that it seems a little bit easier to go straight from chemistry to advanced chemistry rather than taking a year for physics in between. This is a course that I believe can be used as an AP course. You could take opt to take the AP test after it. Um, I, took, I took this exact same book, this exact same course back in my day and I did not do that with living overseas. It, 
just seemed too complicated to figure out how to take the AP, <laughs> how to take the AP test. Maybe things have gotten easier in the years since then. So for her, we very well may look into if there's any options for her to take an AP test and get actual AP credit. But if not, she's having a very solid chemistry um, education. She is considering being something like a chemistry teacher or a math teacher. Like, she doesn't know exactly what she wants to be, but that's an option that she would think about. So that's gonna be her 11th grade science. Then, this is not a second science exactly, although it kind of looks like it. Ex Apology is exploring creation with health and nutrition. This is going to be for her health credit. Typically in high school, a lot of people will, or a lot of colleges or states might require a, one health credit. So uh, that can some off, is often met with a PE class or it can also be met with a health class. So we are opting for the health class. Um, and so this is the Apologia option we're using for this. It comes with the student notebook. This will be the first time we've ever actually used this course. No one else has had a chance to use this course yet in my family, so that's new to us. For her foreign language, she does Mandarin Chinese. She has been learning that for a couple years. And these are the two main books that she'll be reading through in the next year. This is not the only thing she does for Chinese. She, We kind of have cobbled together um, with different resources we have. She does have a workbook that she writes in to practice her writing. This is for practicing her reading because if you have studied Chinese, you know um, learning to read is, is, it's a beast. It's pretty challenging. Chinese grammar is fairly simple. I think it's such a fun language to speak and such a fun language that you can gain confidence in fairly quickly in conversation, but reading is its own challenge. So these are leveled readers at the 600 word vocabulary level. And they're the, I really like how these are designed, which has the pinion on one side, so it's not too distracting or too tempting to cheat by being right under the characters. The characters on the other side, it has a limited leveled vocabulary. Any words that are maybe more obscure, not something the student would necessarily know at this level, are defined, and, but also any word in the whole book is defined in a glossary at the end of the book which makes it really easy and accessible and not overwhelming because learning to read in Chinese as a non-native speaker can be kind of overwhelming. So this is kind of, this will be the main base of it. She also does Rosetta Stone. She listens to a Chinese learning podcast and practices her writing. And that's basically how we do Chinese. She's improving very well at that. Then this is what her history, she will be doing 200, uh, HBL 200 from Sunlight, which is the church history year. And the, this is going to be something that secular homeschoolers would be like, what? <laughs> uh, but yes, this is something Christians do, is we actually study church history. And this is something I highly recommend to Christian families to take a year in high school to really in-depth study church history. It is it's so important, I think, for young Christians to understand the history of the Christian church so that they are not shocked and appalled at an adult age by not knowing that the history of Christianity is not just a series of hero tales and valor and good morals, but it's, it's a tough history at times. There's a, there's a lot. There's a lot to wrestle with, and I, want, I would want ch children, teens, to be able to wrestle with it while we're still together at home and to know these things so that it doesn't surprise them. Now, when I wanted to like just, I, I told my mom, I just wanna pull out a few books from Sunlight 200 to give you guys kind of an example of what she'll be reading. And then I ended up pulling out this whole stack and my mom was like, really, that many? And I'm like, but there's so many good ones. Sunlight 200 is a fantastic high school year. I love this. I have reread many of these books since I was in high school. C.S. Lewis's Till We Have Faces. I've probably read this book five times. This is one of those books that are both enjoyable and challenging. This is one of the core or spine read-alouds for, sp or not read-alouds, there are no read-alouds in the high school sunlight. Uh, this is a Westminster Shorter Catechism. It's one of the Bible spine books used throughout. 
The 100 Most Important Events in Christian History is also a spine text used throughout. This is part of the literature. There's a lot of classic authors featured during this core for the literature. So we have Charles Dickens. She wasn't too excited about this. She, she's not a big Dickens fan yet. We'll see how she feels. We have a couple of Shakespeare plays, and these books are kind of cool because they are basically side-by-side -side, um, translations between original Shakespeare, but then also having a translation, which is nice when you're reading Shakespeare without a teacher to necessarily help, <laughs> help teach you and explain everything to you. So I think it's pretty cool that Sunlight uses these. Uh, G.K. Chesterton's Best of Father Brown. I am a huge fan of the Father Brown stories, so I'm excited for her to read that. Another play by Shakespeare. We have D.K.'s The Story of Christianity, which is a really cool book with a lot of pictures going through many events in the 2000-ish years of Christianity. This is, so that's one of the history spines. This is another Bible spine, is adventuring through the Bible. Very, very thorough, like this is huge. Very thorough book here. And another book I have really enjoyed and I've read probably twice. From Jerusalem to Irian Jaya. This is a history of Christian missions around the world and through all of time. And again, it, it's not just a series of hero tales where everybody is a hero. <laughs> It gets into how complicated Christian missions has been throughout time and how Christian missions is a history of humanity. And the, it, it invites the reader to wrestle, wrestle with the history of missions and wrestle with it. Um, our, our love for God and also our recognition that man has not always done a good job of of loving people and obeying God <laughs> the way that God told that God commanded them to. So this is the bulk of her school for this year, for this coming year. And she also does kind of piano as an self-interest led kind of extra, a little bit of like an elective, maybe not as a full course, but she is teaching herself using internet resources to play the keyboard that she has in her room. And that is 11th grade.